Hey there, Gary Parrish. Welcome back. CBS Sports Eye on College Basketball Podcast, where we sometimes discuss camel fighting, Dota Birds, and Leaky Black. Matt Norlander is here with me. If you watch it on YouTube, smash that like button like you're Brandon Davis. You have consent. And if you haven't subscribed to the YouTube channel yet, please knock that out while you're here. While you're doing that, let me remind you what we got going on. It's called the Summer Shoot Around. It's a series during which we're focusing on 20 notable teams over a span of 10 weeks, 20 per week, 20 teams in 10 weeks. In alphabetical order, we've already knocked out 19. And now we turn our attention to the V's, Villanova. The Wildcats went 30-8 and eight last season, finished second in the Big East standings, but first by two games in the win column. Got a two-seed in the NCAA tournament, lost to Kansas in the Final Four. From that team, Villanova lost Colin Gillespie, Jermaine Samuels. It's two of the top three scorers. Also lost, it's probably worth pointing out, Hall of Fame coach Jay Wright. That's not ideal, but they are bringing back Justin Moore, Caleb Daniels, Eric Dixon, Brandon Slater. So that's four of the top six, though. Uh, Justin Moore will not be available to start the season because he's still recovering from that torn Achilles that he suffered in the 2022 NCAA tournament. Either way, Villanova is also enrolling a top 20 recruiting class. That's headlined by five-star freshman Cam Whitmore. I've got the Wildcats ranked 16th in the top 25 and one. We'll see what Norlander thinks of what's going to be Cal Neptune's first team at Villanova. We'll do that next. But first, a word from our partners. The UEFA Champions League. Nine months of heart-stopping holds your breath acceleration. While Mbappe shines in the city of lights, Benzema's racking up the hat tricks, and the Reds want Mo Magic in Liverpool. This ain't amateur hour. This is the best of the best of the best. This is the UEFA Champions League. Stream every match live on Paramount+. Plus. All right, dead leg. I got Villanova 16th, top 25 and one, 16th in the nation. That's second in the Big East behind only Creighton. You're a believer in what will be Cal Neptune's first team at Villanova. Feels like you've asked me if I'm a believer for like 16 of these 20 teams. I just want to know if you're a believer or not. It's really what I'm trying to get to. Are you a believer uh, or not? What do you believe in in this world? Many, many, many things. Uh, Name three things you believe in. in oh, a little off the beaten path right to start. Three things I believe. How about three unconventional things I believe in? Okay. Three things I believe in in this world. I believe in love at first sight. Oh, wow. I, I'm, I'm certain that it happens all the time. <laughs> um, I believe in. Oh, man, I could go so many avenues here. I believe. Uh, I believe in karma. I believe what you put out into the universe will come back to you. I believe in I believe in that concept. I don't believe in that. Okay. Uh, too, there are too many bad people who have good things happen to them all the time for me to believe in karma. Fair, fair retort. And I believe. Hmm. I believe that there is no chance the Green Bay Packers will ever have another Hall of Fame level quarterback in my lifetime. You get that piece of trash, Brett Favre, followed up by... Stole from my state. <laughs> the smirkiest, most unlikable DB and Aaron Rodgers. We're done. Okay? You got, you got your 30 years worth of Hall of Fame QBs. I believe that uh, things are going to come back around for the Bears. I believe, but I believe, in, I believe in many things. I don't believe in the Villanova Wildcats being the second-best team in the Big East this season, though. I don't believe that. I think that they will be good, but I'm not convinced that they're going to be a top 20 team. We'll get to that in a second. Villanova, Kyle Neptune takes over. We have three of the historically 10 best programs in college basketball history have new coaches this year. Not just new coaches. They're either first-time head coaches or are relatively new to the task. Neptune is 37. Trivia time. Is that a trivia time? Give it. It's not. No, no, that's not a trivia time. No, uh, I'll answer. This is it, not a trivia time. Uh, trivia time. Yeah, you can't trivia time yourself. Yes, I can. I yes. also believe in that. You cannot trivia time oneself. I, okay? I believe that you can. Go trivia ahead. time. Go what ahead. three top ten programs have new coaches this season? Um, Duke, Villanova, and Louisville. Correct. I got it. Neptune, second year as a head coach, was last year at Fordham. Obviously, Shire, Kenny Payne, new head coaches. Trivia time! Okay, okay. Including Kyle Neptune. Right. How many head coaches has Villanova had in its history? So, Kyle, Jay, Lap. There we go. 
Rolly. Then uh, the tunnel starts to get a little dark after that. I think I don't know if you're gonna know. Yeah, um, if you're gonna know any of the other names in that. Okay, those four. Yeah, Tony Hinkle ever coached there? He did not. I think he was a candidate circa 1932. Didn't happen. Should have. I, I I'm gonna say you know. six six ever. You know what? It's not a, it's not a bad guess here. Here's the thing, including Neptune, Villanova basketball, entering its 103rd year of existence has had nine coaches seven of the previous so only nine that's that's damn good that's an average of 12.75 seasons per coach that's a healthy number gp seven of the previous eight finished above 500 whenever they left their post as villanova head coach and at least six of the eight won excuse me six of the eight won at least 60 percent of their games it's, villanova is not i bring this up just to one remind people that villanova is not a great job it is an elite job it's a school that has FBS football, but it is a basketball first university and a basketball first league. You can Mark, 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 Mark Stoops would take issue with that. My specific claim over Villanova is what you're saying. Yes. Mark okay. Stoops does. He, that's disrespectful to Kentucky football to call Villanova basketball school. Another thing I believe in this world is Mark Stoops would not be offended by my opinions on Villanova basketball. But again, we seem to diverge on this. You seem to diverge. The only thing I only, I only believe in one thing. That's not true. You believe in many things. I believe in one thing. Okay, go ahead. Two things. Uh -huh. Just one, really. Okay, so <laughs> Jacob Degrom. I believe in Jacob Degrom. Okay. Uh, let's check back in three weeks, though. Let's just check back in three weeks on that one. But congrats to your Mets. They're officially going to the postseason. Fate accompli there. Okay, here's the point. Villanova is not just a great job; it's an elite job. I think when you consider the history, the location the conference, the brand recognition, and the emphasis on hoops, Villanova, Parrish. Hmm. Top five job in the country. You almost never hear it perched that high. Top five status. But I really think Kyle Neptune has gotten a job that is that prestigious. I made this argument to an extent back in New Orleans, Carolina, Duke, Kansas, Villanova, through and through, blue blood final four. Nova is a blue blood. This list isn't long. It might only be seven or eight schools deep, but you have to include it on that list. Villanova, top five job in the sport. Fire back. Agree or disagree? Well, let's just count it through. I'd say North Carolina, better job. Yes. Duke, better job. Yes. Kansas, better job. Yes. Kentucky, better job. Yes. All right, so now we just, I mean, we're down to one slot. Correct. Gonzaga, better job. No. No. No, Mark Fuse made it an amazing program. Gonzaga's not a better job. It's in a it's in a worse league in an outpost in the Pacific Northwest, and we don't know what it'll be after Mark Fuse's gone. Villanova again, six of the previous eight coaches finished coaching there with a sixty percent win percentage or better. It is proven in a basketball priority league. You don't compete with football at the school. Villanova is a better job than Gonzaga. UMass Lowell might crack the top thirty. Okay. But say sincerely, like I mean, some people would obviously argue UCLA, Arizona, maybe. Maybe. Indi yes. Indiana, yes, maybe Michigan. Maybe. There, are, there are all arguments, but when you consider how good Villanova has been, the national championships, the Final Fours, it's not like Jay Wright, you know, made that program. And now he was the best coach in program history. And I'm not saying definitively. I'm just saying it's got a case. It really yeah. does have a no, case. I, 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 I'm with you. I, we could debate that fifth slot if we're agreeing on the first four, but you could absolutely, to keep it moving and make yeah. sure I'm clear here, you could absolutely reasonably put Dylan over there. Yeah, agreed. Um, so just do that perspective and then take it away here. But that's this is what Neptune is inheriting, man. I mean, when Jay Wright took Villanova over, it had made one tournament in Lapis' final four seasons. That was an eight seed, one and done showing in 99. And then Wright went 52 and 46 in his first three seasons. Didn't sniff the tournament in any of those. And then since 04, 05, Nova made the tournament every single year except one, 2011, 2012. Um, and even there's no tournament in 2020, but Nova was like a two seed then. So the standard is very, very high. Uh, I think the level of expectation here for Neptune GP is to keep Nova... I think the level of expectation for your average informed Nova fan watches most of the games could tell you the starting five. I think the expectation is, listen, uh, you're taking over for a legend, best coach in school history uh, for as long as you're here, whether four years or 25 years, 
just keep Villanova unquestionably in the top three in the Big East. You know, end the year, we are a one, two, or three seed in the Big East tournament uh, every single season. I think that's what he is tasked with. He's not tasked with winning the national championship. He's not tasked with getting to multiple Final Fours yet. He's a young coach taking over a tough job. The question is, can he do it this season? Go ahead and run down the rest of the roster here and what you think for the for the listeners here. But I actually find this to be a relatively intriguing team coaching assignment in year one because someone some of these teams we're talking about they're not going to live up to expectation and i'm i'm just i'm going to sell a little bit on the notion that Villanova, for as good as it's been will automatically keep everything humming and just you know strut to a two three or four seed in the tournament well let's start with the good um they are bringing back three projected starters who averaged at least 25 minutes per game last season for a final 14 that's caleb daniels uh brandon slater and Eric Dixon. So that's a, a, a good place to start. Obviously, the the big question is, when is Justin Moore going to be available? And what's he going to look like? You know, John Fanta reported, um, I believe earlier this week, that Justin Moore is aiming to return like late December, early January. That, that's, that's what, you know, uh, by all accounts, rehab's going great. Um, and he wants to be back by late December, early January. But, like, what will he look like when he's mm-hmm. back in late December, early January after missing an entire offseason and then trying to join uh, a team, you know, midseason on a relatively quick timeline? I mean, he didn't tear this until, like, late March. Correct. And that's a pretty, you know, I, 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 I know that he's, Justin Moore has talked to Kevin Durant about coming back from this injury, talked to John Wall about coming back from this injury, but they didn't come back from it this quickly. And so, you know, you know, I, I hope, I hope when he comes back, he looks exactly like he was when he left because what he was when he left, I mean, was somebody who could reasonably be a first team, all American preseason, you know, this season, I mean, he averaged 15 points per game last season, five rebounds shot, almost 36% from three. He's really good, really good. And not only do you lose, this is like, if you want to sell on Villanova, and I'm not clearly, I've I've got them as a top 20 team and and second, the big East, but they lose Colin Gillespie and just, you know, Justin Moore is supposed to step in and just be the primary point guard. Can't expect that. No, 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 I know. And so like you, The, the plan was lose Colin Gillespie, bring back Justin Moore. Now you lose Gillespie and Moore for much of the season and, you know, a Hall of Fame level coach. I'm a believer in Cal Neptune. He did a nice job at, at Fordham in his one season there. Yes. You know, eighth in the Atlantic 10, that might not sound like much, but that's overachieving at Fordham in the Atlantic 10. Fordham it's, is the anti Villanova. <laughs> yeah. It's so, the yes. best finish for Fordham in the A10 since 2016. Uh, he was on staff at Villanova for eight years before. He went to Fordham. He was a part of both of Villanova's national championship teams. He was on staff for both of those teams and then did a good job. It is interesting, though, like at at Duke, the program, this incredible program being handed to somebody who's, you know, in his 30s at Villanova, this incredible program being handed to Kyle Neptune, 37 years old. Um, it's going to be one of the more interesting stories in, in in college basketball, watching these, relatively speaking, young and inexperienced guys take over big, big brands. Um, but I'm a believer in Kyle Neptune. That said, like, y- you'd be kind of crazy to think losing Jay Wright just doesn't matter, right? Jay Wright's an all-time great, an all-time great. So you're replacing Colin Gillespie, at least for much of the season, the Justin Moore we knew, and – you know, a Hall of Fame coach. Uh, that's a lot. But assuming Caleb Daniels can handle a, a larger role uh, and, and, you know, and, and become the, the leader in, the, in that backcourt, uh, Jordan Longino uh, probably maybe steps into the starting lineup in that backcourt with him uh, alongside Brandon Slater, who's a super senior. And you got Eric Dixon in the middle and then the five-star freshman Cam Whitmore you know, it, you know, uh, on the wing, you know, it's a, it's a sort of a small ball, not unlike, you know, lineup that Villanova has flourished with. Uh, but you've got three very experienced guys from a championship level team and a five-star freshman. That's, that's a pretty good place to start. Although 
man, not having Justin Moore to start the season and not knowing what he's going to be when he is ready to play. That that if you told me Justin Moore was that never happened, and he's on this team preseason top ten team, I think easy. I'm probably right there with you. Uh, that's why I'm selling a little bit on Villanova. Is I don't I just don't know. I I don't know what Justin Moore will win it. Like as you said, he told Fanta he's hoping around the start of Big East play. Late December, early January, that's the hope. Maybe he gets there. Maybe he's not there till January 15th, right? And then how? what what percentage is he playing at? Because he's not going to be 100% when he comes back. Right away, they're not getting Justin Moore of the March 17th Justin Moore. It's just not going to happen there. So I, I just want to see what he is there. Now, uh, a lot of the – you just nailed what I was going to say. Uh, a lot of the small ball – like I – a lot of what – I mean – Dixon is just a glue guy. He just looks like hell to, to have to handle in the paint, right? Like, and, and Daniels is, is also similar. Like he's the Daniels is, you know, a, another classic Villanova guard who can just post you up and, and, and put you on the block and, and kick your ass. I, I, I do like that. That's but, by design, by the way, they don't just, yeah. uh, they don't just right. have these the post up point guards. They like, they really prioritize that. And I think Jalen Brunson was like one of the best at it. Yeah, for sure. And and Gillespie had a ton of that to his game yeah. as well. So so we'll see how we'll see how deep the team is. I mean, right. We talked about UCLA's depth on the previous episode. You know, Jay Wright for a lot of for many of his seasons at Villanova, like the, he didn't go more than six or seven guys getting significant minutes. We'll see if that continues with Neptune in charge. I I don't know. Also, you mentioned Whitmore. You know, he's a projected lottery pick right now. Villanova has not had freshmen or didn't have freshmen under Jay Wright, who for the most part didn't have to play with minutes restrictions, adversity, because there's also, again, the Villanova culture, which will be another thing. Like Neptune comes in, takes over. Will the factory kind of continue to run itself to a certain extent with just the the way that Jay Wright and Neptune was a part of that? There's a, there's a decent chance that winds up happening. You have all these guys, Daniel Slater back. Dixon back, Chris Archer Diakono. Yes, he's still on the roster. He'll be back there. So yeah, there could be something to that. Um, but I want to see, and I got to see what Justin Moore looks like once he once he gets there. So because of that, um, and I'll get to our our final regular season over under here in just a second. There, um, I I think, or at least my prediction will be, Villanova is going to be a successful team that makes the NCAA tournament with plenty of room to spare, and is in the AP re- rankings for plenty of the season. But I wouldn't be stunned if it has a, some fits and starts until more arrives and they're just trying to figure this stuff out. But if Whitmore is a stud, like if he really is a lottery pick, which we just haven't had out of Villanova from a fre- I want to be clear from a freshman like that doesn't happen normally. We'll see if if uh, if Neptune really lets him fly. And if that does happen, then that could be that could be something that changes the game. Trivia time. Lay it on me. Here we go. Cam Whitmore. Projects as a one and done Villanova Wildcat. If okay. he is, he'll yes. be the first true one and done, true freshman, play a season, bounce to the NBA draft. Villanova's first true one and done since who? Ooh. Um, it's uh, how gettable is this? You will not get it. I won't get it. It's that <laughs> ungettable. You you struggled with LeBron James earlier in the week. I may have been leaning into the bit a little bit. Um, give me. All right, uh, let me let me scan. I mean, you'll know the. They have not had a one and done freshman come out of Villanova. I, I I'd be stunned if the, this is not in the past ten years. They have not had a one and done in the past ten years. No, no. Um, is it so? Well, geez. Um. Kerry Kittles was not a one-year player. That's right. It's not Kittles. I think I got it, my man. Hmm. I think I got this. <laughs> Tell me, because here's why I think I got it. Because I remember, w- I remember when this player came out of college at at a at a young and tender age that I was thinking he didn't seem like he was like that, like you know, that ready to go or that amazing. Is the answer? I don't know if this is it. Was he a one and done? Is it Tim Thomas? Ding, ding, ding. Come on ding, ding. now. <laughs> Tim Thomas, 1997. Give it back to me. Tim Thomas in 1997. I, I wondered if he was a two-year player. Wow. I believe now, Villanova did with Jay Wright have a freshman 
after one season of playing you know the draft but he redshirted the year before so he, t- he did two years of college tim thomas hold on i gotta check this out t- I, I, I was like half out of the hat here man because i didn't know if that was because i remember he got picked he got picked i remember when he got drafted that was really when i started following it was mid 90s in high school and being like Tim Thomas, oh, he was like a top 15 pick. Oh, where was he picked? Bring it up. He was the seventh pick. Who was picked right before him? Who was picked, draft. who was picked right before him? So pick six overall in, in, yeah. in 90. Oh, geez. I mean, GP, uh, 97 drafts, six overall. Um, I, 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 I was Kobe, was Kobe number six to, to Charlotte? Kobe was, Kobe was 96, I believe. Let me just, I'll handle this. Handle it. Well, I don't know. You're right. Kobe was 96. I feel I feel like Kobe was the eighth pick. Maybe. Okay. 1997 draft. Number one pick, Tim Duncan. Oh, I was just going to say Duncan. All right. Yeah. Number two pick, Keith Van Horn. How about that? Number three, Chauncey Billups. Yep. Number four, Antonio Daniels. Mm. Number five, Tony Batie. Classic. Ron Mercer. Ron Mercer, one of my favorite college players of all time. He went six. That's right. Seven, Tim Thomas. Eight, Adonald Foyle. Nine, Tracy McGrady. And number 10. Yep. The great (laughs) Danny Fortson. (laughs) Danny Fortson. No, you don't do that. Danny Fortson. That's a con- you were building it up. That that build up was not Danny Fortson level. That's all I'm saying. Danny Danny Fortson was a conference USA stud. No. Oh. Me and Danny Fortson were in school together at the same time. Not together, but we were in school at the same time. <laughs> I, I believe it's probably true that uh student reporter Gary Parrish covered Cincinnati star Danny Fortson. Hey, hey, Danny Fortson was a solid player. Yeah, solid player. Um, we gotta do over under here. Uh, I did have one more note. And since on his first team All American in 1997. Uh, by the way, Villanova did set the NCAA record last season. Made 83 percent of its foul shots. That is an NCAA record breaking Harvard's 83-84 long-standing mark of 82.2 percent. So Villanova last season, maybe having some carryover, they'll still be good on the line. Danny Fortson shot 87 percent from the free throw line. Is that a fact? Or are you just come on? What was his? What is? What was Danny Fortson's college career free throw average? You get that number, while I read you the schedule for Villanova. Here we go. I'm just going to pretend it was 87 percent. Obviously, Big East. We love the round robin. We couldn't love it more. So they're going to play everyone home and away. Here's non-conference. I think Villanova's had more games of note in the non-conference than any other team in our summer shootaround series. Uh, two of the first four will be on the road. No other team we've talked about in the summer shoot around has had to play two of its first four games on the road. The first one on the road, which Villanova should win, but it's an intra-city battle, a big five matchup that's at Temple, and Temple should be improved this year. So, you know, keep an eye. You never know. They'll play at Michigan State on November 18th, and then they will go to Portland for PK-85. Yes, Villanova's yet another team involved in that. They'll get Iowa State first. Maybe a little bit tricky. We'll see there. Then they're going to get either UNC or Portland, depending on how those games break uh break out and then on the other half of the bracket uh weirdly enough so villanova is going to play at michigan state on the other side of this bracket michigan state so they could play them again in the you know in less than two weeks time uconn's also on the other side so if they did play uconn that would not count obviously as a big east game in the ledger alabama and oregon are also involved there so uh, i think if you're a villanova fan you're hoping that somehow some way your team winds up playing out of the crimson tide or the ducks as opposed to having repeat opponents in the same season then villanova will play at home Against Oklahoma, they will play Boston College in Newark. We'll see what Boston College can be in its second year under Earl Grant. Um, perhaps a little improved. They've got another road game, Big Five. They're at St. Joe's. Again, Villanova's got a little bit of a different situation, which I like. But we're talking about three true road non-conference games. So if Villanova can get itself into a good situation in non-conference with wins, I'll tell you what, it's going to set itself up really well for seeding if it can get the job done in the Big East. That being said, I went first on the last one. You're going to go first this time. Those are the games of no at Temple, at Michigan State, PK 85 against Iowa State, then UNC or Portland. Then they got the other half of the bracket, as I mentioned. They'll be home to the Sooners. They're going to play Boston College on a neutral, quasi neutral, Newark to, to Philly. And then they will be at St. Joe's and then a round robin Big East schedule. What is your regular season over under pick for the Villanova Wildcats? First. 
Nada informs me Danny Fortson shot 74% from the line at Cincinnati. You know what? Respectable number. But if you round up to the nearest 87, it's 87%. Okay. All right. If you just got, you just got to round up. Yeah. I believe you believe in rounding up. That's another thing you believe in. Rounding up. I only believe in Jacob DeGrom. I'm going to go five league losses and three non-league losses. That's eight losses before the Big East tournament. So 23 and eight heading into the Big East tournament. That probably corresponds with where you have them overall. You said 16th in your top 25 and one, correct? That's, that's right. Five league, league losses. You probably have Creighton with either three or four. So finishing five league losses. Eh, yeah, I guess. I think you can finish second in the Big East probably. with five league losses. Yeah, yeah, probably. That's right. I will go. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say 21 wins for Villanova in the regular season. I'll say they go 21 in 10. I'll say they get uh I'll say they they get picked off twice in the PK. I'll say they go 1 and 2 in Portland. So two losses there. And then call a loss at Michigan State. That's a third loss. And then I'll I'll mark them down for one more loss in the non-conference somewhere. They got a road game at Temple, road game at St. Joe's. We'll see. So give me four non-league losses and I will have them finishing with six losses in the Big East and I will have them finishing third. We did not touch on the Yukon Huskies here, but I'm going to go. I think I'll have, I'll, I think I might go. Or, yeah, I'll go Xavier, Creighton, Nova, Yukon, top four, probably in that order. Maybe Yukon and uh, Villanova wind up with the same amount of losses, but I, I'm actually tipping my hand a little bit with our preseason content. I'm going to, I'm going to take a little bit of a risk and I'm going to say there's going to be a little bit of chaos in the Big East and I am not going to take Creighton. I'll take Xavier with Sean Miller in his first season to win the Big East regular season championship and uh, Villanova to come in third. One last thing on Villanova. Um, we mentioned the recruiting class headlined by Cam Whitmore. Um, Mark Armstrong is also a part of the recruiting class. He's like a 6'2 combo guard, you know, borderline top 50 guy in the class of 2022. But he and he and Whitmore played on this USA Basketball FIBA U18 Americas team, and they were both starters. Mark Armstrong was the primary point guard uh, and, and, and helped them win a gold medal. So if we're looking for another option um, at lead guard, it's, I know Villanova doesn't have a track record of relying heavily on true freshmen, but here's a guy who I think can step in and, and, and play real minutes. At least um, his profile suggests he should be able to step in and, and play impactful minutes uh, uh, as a freshman. And then this, um, I think it's just an also interesting thing about the roster. They didn't add any transfers. How, how, get there. how many, right? How many legitimate how? top 30 teams didn't add uh, somebody from the transfer portal? I bet the number is really low. It might yeah. be one. It might be Villanova. Yeah, that's a that's a good note. I don't know. That's one of those things where yeah, if you're listening and you're following a top 30, top 35 team and you know for sure, let it, give us a shout. Let us know. But uh, huh? No transfers in. Maybe a, good, maybe a good sign there. We'll see. Villanova is going to be one to follow, one to track. And again, I actually like, I don't know how much Neptune had to say in this non-conference at all. It might have all been done with Jay uh, while he was away on uh, on his yearly, uh, on his sabbatical of, at Fordham. But uh, they will be challenging. And so we are going to get plenty of answers about this Villanova team in the first month of the season. Shouts to Devin Downey. Shouts to Chester, or South Carolina. Shouts to Huck and Larnell. Thank you guys once again for listening. The Ion College Basketball Podcast. If you're not subscribed Go subscribe anywhere you subscribe to podcasts, including Apple Podcasts and Spotify. Over at Apple, let's get five stars, a nice review, type some words. There's more of us than there are of them. I believe in that as well. There we go. That's what I thought. I believe in two things. Yeah, you believe in many more than two things. <laughs> I think really at this point, just two. One is Jacob DeGrom, and the other is that there is more of us than there are of them. And that's enough to believe in, I think. Who it's needs to believe today. Who needs to believe in more than those two things? I, I well, I do, but yeah, I feel like that's enough for me. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's all I need to believe in. I feel like that's enough to get me through life. Yeah, well, maybe I don't know. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll talk to you again real soon. Till then, take care. <laughs>